Geometry Dash has always been a game fully devoted towards the challenging levels it offers, as well as the game's fantastic editor dating as far back as the game's release in August of 2013. And since its creation nearly a decade ago, the game has seen countless fantastic works of creative collaborations over the span of the game's lifetime. Ranging from some of the first collaborations ever, to collaborations with literally thousands of individual people, collabs have been one of the key aspects to creating in the game ever since the first known collaboration. Collaborating has also evolved a lot in its own right. In the modern era, players usually use programs like GDShare or LevelShare, but back then, there were no useful tools, nor were there shortcuts. If you wanted to collab with somebody, you either uploaded the level publicly so that the user could copy it, or you gave the person your GD account and passed it around until all of the parts were completed. And even well after the Steam version was released in December of 2014, people still passed GD accounts around to collaborate with each other. This is the way it worked for many years. No one's really sure what exactly the first collab was, but everyone has settled on collaboration by Sari to be considered to be the first collab ever made in the game, but that's actually not true. That honor would go to a relatively unknown level named Time of Begin by Black P2S Full, the same guy responsible for Silent Club. But it wasn't until the release of unlisted levels and external tools like GD Share that collaborating changed to make it easier and more accessible for players to make levels. And as innovative as these tools are, one of the levels that was made with them is one of the most impressive works of art that the game has ever seen. And to some people, it is considered to be one of the greatest levels of all time. Memory levels have always been a part of the game, with many of them having their own unique spin on the gameplay genre, but this one aimed to break as many boundaries as it could. Conceptualized nearly three years ago to now, its journey from an idea to a collaborative masterpiece is surely one to remember for many years to come. And this iconic collaboration has no equal. And you all know what level I'm talking about. This is the history of Limbo. The day is February 22nd, 2020. Fresh off the back of levels like Omega and Mad Mansion, Minecap was slowly becoming a prominent figure within the community. Many people already knew him for his previous work, Gamma, Sigma, and Celestial Force just to name three, and the more levels he took part in, the more noticed he became. And eventually, he wanted to shift his creative focuses towards making far more defying projects. Minecap always had ideas of pushing the envelope when it came to his projects, but his already existing creative work didn't really reflect that all that well. The levels he hosted and took part in were solid, but they weren't anything seriously groundbreaking in the creative space. But that lack of creative prowess only pushed him to break the barriers even further than he already wanted to. And that's exactly what he wanted to achieve. So in late February of 2020, Work began on organizing ideas and gathering talented creators to make the hardest memory demon in the game. And Minecap quickly saw the project come to life. And on April 3rd of 2020, Minecap uploaded a teaser trailer for the level, edited by HJ Fod, and the hype was almost immediate. So many prominent community figures were already involved with the project, and from the glimpse of gameplay that was shown off, it was instantly clear from the get-go that this wasn't going to be like any other memory levels in the game. So many creative gameplay mechanics and ideas shown off on only the first preview is a huge deal. Minecap, as well as the creators taking part in the project, were really stepping out of their comfort zone for this one, and it wouldn't take long for more gameplay parts to show up all over YouTube in the coming months. It only took six days for the individual collab participants to start uploading their parts to their YouTube channels, and it started on April 9th, when Vismuth uploaded his gameplay part, followed by The One, Giron, 
Hera, and several other creators over the span of around six months. And although a lot of their gameplay parts were briefly showcased in the teaser trailer, some of the creators didn't upload their parts separately, like Stormfly, Vlack, and Lumpy, so it was nice to see their parts in the trailer as well as the others. But now that most of the gameplay was laid out, now it was time to take the next big step, and arguably the harder one. Now it was time for people to decorate the parts. Now, difficulty obviously varies depending on the part that is being decorated, but to say that the parts were hard to decorate would be an understatement. Some of these creators went through absolute torture to decorate these gameplay parts, and it shows with the finished results. Why? Well, if it isn't obvious to an average person, these parts are wildly creative. And not only are they naturally hard to decorate by themselves, but they also need to carry on the creativeness that they achieve in decorative form. And they need to conform to what the host is trying to achieve at the same time as all of that. Some of the easier to decorate parts were already done by this point, but the first truly painful building process would be achieved by Liab, tasked to decorate the ones part. Liab described the decoration process as nothing short of brutal, and he said that he didn't enjoy decorating the part at all. But ironically, at the time that it was finished, it ended up being Liab's best part he had ever made up to that point. As described in his own words, it was his greatest creative accomplishment thus far. However, Liab wouldn't be the only decorator to go through absolute torture while building. Liab is just one of many. Limbo's ridiculous decorating challenge also managed to make Zephyrox nearly lose his mind, as well as another person that we'll talk about later on. But as for Zephyrox's decoration, decorating Stormfly gameplay, let alone a very vertically inclined, rotation-heavy part, is not easy, and makes for an especially unique challenge. And Zephyrox delivered, with an honestly really stunning part to look at when playing it and when the part is fully zoomed out. And as for the creators that had unseen gameplay, well, it's rather unfortunate. Heinz never ended up building any gameplay, Vlack and N-Level ended up getting their parts replaced, and some creators fizzled out of the project entirely. And some have had never before seen parts. On October 24th, Pock was assigned to decorate Wio's Cube Maze gameplay, and as everybody knows, Pock succeeded. But what many people don't know is that somebody else was actually decorating the part for a short time, and barely anyone has seen it before. Vrimer, better known for his solo levels like Shaw, was for a short time decorating Wio's gameplay. And this is what it looked like. Interesting to think about what this part could have looked like if things had gone differently. But sometime in July, Vrimer's part was scrapped and the part was given to Pock instead. Pock made quick work with the part, and like with most of the parts, this one too proved to be one hell of a challenge. No traditional structures, just a cube maze, orb maze, then final duel. It took him three months of building and figuring everything out, and on October 24th, Pock settled with this. We'll come back to Pock's part later. But of all of the parts to be replaced, one of them is easily the most important, and it might come as a huge surprise to many. This is Crone 44's part, and the part that Crone ended up making is now iconic to the level, but when Crone was working on finishing the part, there was actually something else here instead of the key randomizer. And just like with Vrimer's part, Imagining this part without the key maze is very weird. In March of 2020, when Crone was working on his gameplay, Gaiden Hurtney was chosen to build gameplay for the finale in the off chance that Crone wouldn't finish in time, and this is what was built. For the finale, Gaiden built a multi-game mode duel centered around pure memory timings and precision. This 9 second clip is the only video that exists of it, and this is yet another glimpse of what the finale could have looked like had Crone never finished his iconic part. And we've been looking at these parts individually, but let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at the level's progression from a little further away. As shown by the list on screen, this is what Limbo's situation looked like on October 1st, 2020, with the left side being the gameplay, the right side being decoration, 
and the yellow being both. And as far as mega collabs go, this level is sailing along pretty well. But things kept being tweaked, and sometimes full sections would get removed to make way for higher quality parts. One of the parts that kept being replaced, decorated, and replaced again was part 11. Part 11 is the part right after Stormfly. And remember, Stormfly's gameplay spans both Zephyrox and the dual wave after it. And at the time, the wave section was being decorated by XL Spiral, but was then scrapped later on so that someone could make something better. But more on that in a minute. Part 11's gameplay was initially set to be made by X-Step and decorated by GD Skelly, but the part was later removed along with XL Spiral's part as well because Minecap thought that it just didn't fit the theme well enough. And so now, the parts had to be rebuilt from the ground up. And so, when Xtep quickly remade his gameplay, Minecap looked for a while and eventually decided on Slay to decorate Stormfly's wave section, who was another creator known for their distinct creating style. And as that part was being decorated, somebody else also joined in to help. Veteran creator Jazor joined the project on October 17th, replacing the subtle two-second part that Vlack made as Vlack never ended up finishing past the gameplay. And nearly a month later, on November 20th, Jazor uploaded a video of his part to his channel. It was also at around this time that Toxic's decoration ended up being scrapped as well. But again, more on that later on. Now all that was left to do were the important parts more than anything. Everything else was finished and ready to go for the most part, but the major setbacks were now mainly these three. Part 11, Para, and the finale. And remember, this is before the level has to be merged, which will be proven to be an absolutely painful process later on. And as time went on, so did the Mega Collab. It's been almost a year since the level's beginnings now, and funnily enough, the level ended up being in limbo several times throughout the span of the first year. But the first major stalemate wouldn't happen until early 2021, and what occurred would end up nearly completely cancelling the level as well as all of Minecap's ongoing projects. In April of 2021, something happened that would indefinitely change the state of Limbo and all of Minecap's ongoing projects. And before this is talked about, please know that the only reason this is brought up is because it is relevant to the level's story. Thank you. Starting in March of 2021, Minecap would undergo a serious controversy that would end up altering his position as a community figure, as well as altering every other project that he was working on at the time. And the reason for this is because of the Michigan situation. On April 2nd, Minecap's curiosity ended up resulting in the worst possible outcome. One thing led to another, and before he knew it, Minecap was responsible for people knowing about the passing of Michigan. The events that took place behind the public eye eventually ended up with a tweet from Viperin letting everybody know what had happened. Minecap confessed himself, as his guilty conscience ended up with him admitting that he was the one who initially leaked Michigan's passing. And whether or not he knew it at the time, there was nothing that could be done to undo the damage. Minecap eventually resolved ties with people directly affected by it, and over the months following this, Minecap grew to face consequences instead of leaving everything on a bad note. This took a severe toll on Minecap's mental health, and he never said anything more about the situation due to burner accounts and many other people attacking him. And just like that, Minecap left. And right before he left, Minecap ultimately decided to cancel everything that was currently being worked on, and this included all projects. All upcoming things all secret projects, everything, including Limbo. The level was just sitting there, as an unfinished, mangled mega collab but the level was only really cancelled for a short period of time. On April 13th, 2021, Penito made a tweet and said that he managed to talk Minecap out of cancelling the project, but that Minecap wasn't going to return to hosting it. Instead, 
the level would be given a D Joxy instead of Minecap, mainly because Joxy was already responsible for most of the merging, and as Penito said, he basically shadow hosted the level onwards. So here's where we're at. Limbo was relatively close to being finished, with really only three major parts remaining. Then the level became paused for a short time, then the level was picked back up, and given to the co-host, Djoxy, to finish and upload himself. It was also at around this time that the original verifier, Localizer, would end up dropping the verification due to the level's cancellation. Now in May of 2021, with no verifier, Limbo is nearly a year and a half old now, and now the level was in full revive mode. Joxy was working constantly on the project, and if he wanted to get anywhere, he would have to work on merging and getting everything else done for hours nearly every day. But alongside all of that, there was another concern. Some of the parts in the level were finished in April of 2020, over a year ago now, and some of the parts were really starting to show their age. Joxy noticed this, and in April of 2021, Grenade of Tacos, and later Matty 2003 in July, were both invited to help with polishing, merging if needed, and optimizing the absolute hell out of Limbo. The first order of business, though, was to clean up the older parts, and aim to improve them by dusting them off a little bit so that the level maintained a more consistent quality. This is most noticeable with parts like Vismuth having a full polishing with minuscule things added onto it for the finished result. And unsurprisingly, Joxy and the crew immediately began working on fixing everything else. For the beginning of the revival process, the idea was for Joxy and the others to all work on different areas of the level at the same time and eventually merge everything together at the very end, and the challenging part of this is obvious. Before really any big merges could happen though, the parts have to be done in the first place. And remember when I said that GD Skelly's part ended up being removed? Well, on January 18th, 2021, KWMS was invited to decorate X-Step's new gameplay. And just like with Slay, KWMS was also known for his distinct and very appealing decoration style. Castrix was also briefly invited to help with finalizing Slay's part, and was responsible for adding pretty much just some glow to the part, shake triggers, and that was about it. And while everything else was going on, now with KWMS decorating, it only seemed like the level awaited two major things now instead of three. Now it was just Paris part and the finale. And it goes without saying that the finale was going to easily be the hardest part to decorate. Minecap didn't waste any time, however, and work began as soon as the first block was placed. Minecap quickly took to the drawing board, and over the course of many weeks, Minecap would endure the most difficult building challenge that he would ever face in the editor. And now, the plan was fully in motion. Limbo was nearing the endgame. Now being in June of 2021, the level was nearing its completion as a finished level. And on July 6, 2021, Minecap finished his part. And it shocked the community. Minecap had done it. The finale was complete. It was easily the greatest thing that Minecap ever created in the editor, and this part seriously shocked the community with how good it was. 
and for several years to come, this part will continue to be one of the most unique and well-executed things ever made in the game for a long time. Not only was it finished on his birthday, but this part immediately became a fan favorite once Minecat posted it, and with the crown jewel of the level completed, everything was finished except for KWMS and Para. So now all there was left to do was for two parts to be finished, and then the merging hell begins. But the part wasn't perfect though. As shown by the video of it, Minecap went all out on his part, and he broke his own rules, not caring about the future consequences of things like not using limited groups or worrying about optimization. And this would make reducing the part down absolute torture. And during the intense effort to reduce the groups and optimize the part down by thousands of objects, many decoration ideas ended up being scrapped along the way. Like for example, this decoration in Eggnog's part, the initial snake decoration in Flash's part, this background in KWMS, and several other minuscule things throughout. But in the end, nearly all of these seemed too out of place to be in the level and were ultimately removed. But the biggest thing to be removed, while temporary, was actually KWMS's entire decoration. On April 20th, KWMS was actually kicked for a short period of time due to him not showing signs of progress for several months at a time. When KWMS was kicked, he ended up being replaced by a Spanish creator named Nectar. Nectar is a creator mainly known for his solo levels, like Foam, and Minecap thought that Nectar might be a good fit to decorate X-Step's very movement-heavy gameplay. And so, now with Nectar instead, Time was ticking for the remaining two parts to be completed, and a couple of days after KWMS was initially invited to help with the project, somebody else was invited to finally help decorate Paris part. We'll come back to that soon though. And on July 30th, 2021, the level was nearing its full completion. Minecap uploaded a teaser trailer for Limbo on the 30th, and in the video, you might notice that KWMS is not only finished, but Paris part has received fresh new decoration, decorated by TH04. And this now only meant one thing. The only thing stopping the level from being released is its lack of a verification, and the level's lack of stability. The level was large. Like, 407,000 objects large. And that object count was just not going to work. The level was so large that Joxy actually had to split the level in half, splitting it at KWMS, just so he could merge the level in a stable condition. He also ended up resetting the groups in the level, starting the group reset at the end of KWMS in the full level, because the level really desperately needed it in order for everything to work in one big chunk. Most of the reason for the needed group reset was because of parts like Minecap, that used hundreds of groups to create the effects that the part shows off, but it would still take quite a long time before any big steps were taken. On August 29th, Minecap uploaded an anti-cheat demonstration for the finale, showing off a pretty clever way to stop players from pausing mid-attempt to try and cheat by tracking the key by pausing the game. Even if you set your speed to 0.01%, the new pause buffer needed to survive the newly implemented anti-cheat is still not big enough. The new hold timing at the end also made the key picker change. Before the anti-cheat was implemented, the key was supposed to be chosen freely via a mini-wave, but Minecap changed that when making the anti-cheat. Now if you want to select the desired key, you have to wait until the key is glowing. And once it is, you have to release as you're holding the entire time leading up to it. Doing so will allow you to choose whatever key you would like. Doing it this way was much better as it now prevented people from pausing the game after the key maze and watching back their footage and then just picking the key that way. Now it was completely impossible to choose any of the keys. And a little time before the teaser trailer came out, after having no verifier for quite a while, somebody was finally chosen to verify Limbo. And while many backups were suggested, and considered, ultimately, Bgram seemed like the appropriate choice. 
this was his chance to defy his career as a player on a scale that he had never been on before. And he knew it. And so, for the next year and a half, B. Graham would begin the ultimate verification journey. And this is how it went. This was it, the final stretch. Graham was just seconds away from verifying this three minute long memory tight, and he had no intentions of giving up. All he needed to do was to get the right key. All he needed to do is focus. And on November 25th, 2022, B. Graham achieved his ultimate goal. A hundred and nine thousand attempts, countless hours of playtime, and over a year and a half in the making, B. Graham had just made history. With several fails past the first half, including 90% times two, all of that hard work and grinding finally came to an end. The verification wasn't announced immediately though, because Minecap had actually made a non-existent auto level as a teaser for the verification with a level he called Modifier Visible. And when rearranging the letters in the level's name, you get this. The execution here is seriously perfect. Minecap or Bgram could have just tweeted and said that it was verified, but instead, an entirely non-existent level was made just to surprise people even further. And later that same day, Limbo would officially be released on Minecap's account for anyone to play, and that is the story of Limbo. And as amazing as the level is, you've probably wondered at some point as to why the level is named Limbo, and there is actually a reason for it, and here's why. Limbo is mostly named what it is due to the phrase in limbo, which is being in an uncertain or undecided state. This is thematically relevant to the level's gameplay, with practice runs taking two to three hours and making top players feel like they're playing the game for the first time again. And without a guide to help them learn the memory, until they complete the practice run, they will be, no pun intended, in limbo. And ever since the level has been released, the level has not only received its rightful epic rating, but it has since received upwards of six victors within the span of less than two months, with the first being Viper Venom 95, 
Let's fucking go! I just beat Limbo. And the latest victor being cursed, beating the level in full detail. Now you beat it. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! 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 yes. Oh. oh my god! Yes! Let's Finally, go. And as time goes on, there will only be more and more victors of the level. The level has been placed at number 7 on the demon list, and eventually, every key will have its own unique victor. But until then, we'll just have to wait and find out who those victors are. This has been the History of Limbo, and as always, thanks for watching.